Welcome to part one of a series of test drive videos for the Sequitron. Now you may think it's just another sequencer program, but there's a unique twist. It was designed to be played and controlled completely from a music keyboard. Now this has been difficult to demonstrate in previous videos, so I'm going to use the on-screen virtual keyboard, which is new to version 8. And if your computer can play MIDI, you can try this yourself and follow along without having to connect a real keyboard. OK, I'll explain how it works and why it does what it does in part two, but for now we'll start from scratch by installing the free limited edition version, which you can download from the Philizound website. You can run the installation package directly from the web or download it first, as I've done here, and run it from your computer. Here's the downloaded package in my downloads folder. So just double click and follow the prompts. If you're not sure about anything, just go with the defaults. Now I'm going to create a desktop icon just for convenience. So we'll tick this box here and click next. And now it's installed, the icon's up here, and it's saying I can launch it from here if I want. So I'll do that, finish. The first time it starts up, you get a reminder to say that it's running in novice mode. This has fewer options on the screen and limited functionality. So this is just to get you off the ground and we can turn this off later. So for now, just click OK to acknowledge. And there we have the main Secretron window. This is the main status window, currently showing four sequences, one, two, three, four. There are more of these in the full version. You can think of these as tracks if you've used other programs, but as you'll see later, they are not quite the same. And besides, that would have meant calling it the Trackatron. So at the moment, the status window is in configuration mode, and there are several drop-down boxes to play with, and there are more options in the config menu. Now this allows you to customise the program before you start it running. If you save the configuration, the next time you start up, you will go straight to run mode. So we'll do this later on. Now this is the new template window, showing the functions for each key along the top, and below that the virtual key, which you can click with the mouse. There are various buttons on the template, which you can configure the layout. For example, we can just display two octaves worth. Now you can turn the whole window off with the view menu. Or if you just want to see the functions and not interested in the virtual keyboard section, just shrink the window and they disappear. At the moment, the keys are not functional, which is why they're all red. This is because we're in configuration mode. And later on, when we set it running, you'll see the keyboard go live and you'll be able to click these keys to simulate key presses on a real keyboard. Just one final check before we set it running. The Sequitron picks up the first input and output MIDI devices it finds on your computer. And these are shown here in the port section. This is the input and this is the output. Ignore the input for now because we're going to use the virtual keyboard for our input. This is the output port, which is crucial, otherwise you won't hear anything. Now my computer's picked up the Microsoft built-in software synthesizer, but yours may be different. It doesn't matter for the moment, as long as it's picked up something, there's a good chance it will make some sounds. If it doesn't work, or you find it's too sluggish to respond to your playing, we can change it later. So now we'll go to the control section over here and click the run button. You'll see the metronome start running. And this is the point where all control is handed over to the music keyboard or virtual keyboard in our case. And this is the real essence of the Secretron. You no longer need to use the computer keyboard or mouse. Now, having said that, we're about to use a mouse to demonstrate the program, which doesn't need a mouse. I think there's probably a word for that, but here it goes anyway. The music keyboard is now live, and these little P's on the template 
show that all the keys except one should be playable. So we'll check those out. Now whatever you do, don't click the command key here just yet. We'll do this later. I know this is a red rag to a bull, so you probably will. If you did, that's what would happen. And if you do that, click it again and you'll go back to live mode. Now, if you're hearing notes as you click these keys, then this is good news and you can skip the next bit about configuring ports. If you're not hearing anything and you suspect it's the wrong output port, this is how you change it. You need to go back to configuration mode. So click the stop button here. Acknowledge the warning. And now we can click config ports and you'll see a display now showing the inputs on the left half and outputs on the right half. So we're looking at the output section. The section is divided into two lists. All the devices found on your computer are listed in this part and those allocated to the Secretron are listed here where they're called ports. So to allocate a device, click the one you want to use and click the right arrow. Now we've got two ports. Only allocate one port for now to keep things simple. So to deallocate, you click the unwanted port and click the left arrow and you'll see it returns to the free device list. When you're finished, click done and we're back to the main status screen. Now we can click run again and you can test the keyboard. Now if the keys are playing OK, then we can save this configuration so it will start next time fully configured and running. To do this, we don't have to stop the Secretron. We can just go to config, save, all to default. There's a confirmation prompt and it's done. So we'll check this is all working by closing the Secretron. And we can close this download window as well. We finish with that. Right, now I'll start the Secretron again by double clicking the icon. And it's gone straight into run mode. The status says running, the metronome's going, and the keyboard should be live. If you're still having problems getting it to play, there may be a more fundamental issue with playing MIDI on your PC. Now this is outside the scope of this test drive, but there are a couple of things you could try, and it depends on your Windows configuration and version of Windows, so they may not work for you. If you see a loudspeaker icon on the bottom right of your screen, you can double click this to reveal a volume control window or a mixer. Now on my system there's a fader for the software synth which is the one I'm using and I need to check the volumes up and that it's not muted. Now if you can't get to this mixer window you can get to it via control panel. Now this is a bit of a minefield but I'll just show you what it's like on Windows XP. You go start settings control panel and in here is an item called sounds and audio devices. You double click that and there's lots of ways of configuring your sound so be careful about treading here. Again there's a volume slider here and a mute box and if you go into audio there's a section for MIDI music playback and there you can see the Microsoft Wavetable software synth, which is what I happen to be using on my computer. And if I click volume here, we see the same mixer window you saw earlier. Close all these. Now another option, if you're still having trouble, is to try playing a simple MIDI file. Now if you don't have one handy, we can create one with the Secretron. The factory settings have already planted a MIDI pattern in sequence one, so we can save this to a MIDI file. We click File, 
save sequences to MIDI, and then just type in a file name here, call it test, save, and it's done. Now, in case you didn't notice where that folder was, we can go to File, Open MIDI Scene Folder. We'll cover scenes later. But this is the folder where the file lives, and you can see it there. Now, we won't click this file just yet. We'll get rid of the Sequitron by closing it. And that takes it completely out of the picture, so there's no possible clashes with whatever you use to play MIDI files. Now we can double click the MIDI file and you can hear Windows Media Player, in my case, has picked it up and has played the four notes of the metronome. Now if yours doesn't play, then I'm afraid you'll need to do some more digging. So we'll close that. Anyway, assuming everything's working okay, that's it for part one. Many thanks for watching and join me in part two where all will be revealed about that special command key.